to steal from the Empire? You just walk in like you belong. They're so proud of themselves. So fat and satisfied. They can't imagine that someone like me would ever get inside their house. Cassian Ander. The Empire is choking us so slowly. We're starting not to notice. What I'm asking is this. Wouldn't you rather give it all to something real? I need all the heroes I can get. For the greater good. Call it what you will. Let's call it war. There's fermenting out there, son. Pockets of fermenting. You're in my net. Are you a fish? Or are you a thief? You're slipping. <laughs> I'm not slipping. I've just been hiding for too long. As long as everyone thinks I'm an irritation, there's a good chance they'll miss what I'm really doing. What are you really doing? This is what revolution looks like. I'm tired of losing. Welcome back, everyone. This will be my new Star Wars and or trailer video. There's a bunch of Easter eggs. They also made a couple of big announcements in the trailer, too, about when they're shifting the premiere date. So we'll break it all down. I'll be doing videos for all the episodes, just like I do for the other Star Wars Disney Plus series. So be sure to subscribe to get them all. Now confirmed that the first couple of episodes are dropping September 21st. They pushed it a couple weeks so that it doesn't overlap with the She-Hulk episodes quite as much. I always thought it was weird that they were dropping two really huge series with long runs right on top of each other. Like, why are you doing that to yourself? She-Hulk episodes are going to start in a couple weeks. It'll run for nine episodes. Star Wars Andor is actually 12 episodes. So that's why they're dropping the first three episodes on premiere day. It'll still run for like 10 weeks. I just did a big video for the Mandalorian Season 3 trailer, so I'll link that below in the description. That'll be starting in early February. It'll be like the next big Star Wars series after Andor. We also had the Star Wars Ahsoka episodes, which will be starting next spring. That'll be after the Mandalorian Season 3, but that'll be a Mandalorian spinoff during the same part of the timeline as the Mandalorian episodes. I also did a separate Ahsoka trailer video, so I'll link that below in the description as well. As I said in my last Andor trailer video, this is meant to be a prequel to Rogue One. It's set about five years before the events of Rogue One, and it'll just show the formation of the Rebellion. It had become more of the actual Rebellion by the time of Rogue One. The story of that movie literally being them stealing the Death Star plans. Many Bothans died, also a lot of the characters that we'll meet in this series. Most notably, Cassian Andor. One of the other cool connections with characters like Ahsoka and Anakin Skywalker is that Cassian Andor also went by the codename Fulcrum, just like Anakin Skywalker did during the Clone Wars, and then later Ahsoka and Callum during Star Wars Rebels. The events of Star Wars Rebels kind of bump up against the events of Rogue One because it takes place around that same time after the Rebellion has already formed. But Star Wars Rebels was a little bit earlier in the timeline of the actual Rebellion, so there's a little bit of overlap here. With a couple exceptions of the really big characters like Mon Mothma, who you've seen many times before in the Star Wars movies and Star Wars Rogue One, most of these characters are meant to be relatively new, especially some of the Imperial characters. Right now, it seems like the biggest ones are going to be Stellan Skarsgård's Luthen character, who seems like Mon Mothma, like another really big, powerful figure inside the Empire who's critical in the formation of the Rebellion, because it seems like he's the person who winds up recruiting Cassian Andor in the first place. You also see him with a couple different hairstyles, so it kind of denotes this time change that happens during the series. When he's meeting Mon Mothma on Coruscant, his chambers just seem way nicer, his clothes, everything about it just seems like his normal Imperial trappings here. But then later in the trailer, when you see him on this scrapyard planet, when he's recruiting Cassie and Andor, he's got the short haircut and he doesn't have any attendants with him. So it just seems like even more than Mon Mothma does, he goes on the DL trying to actually form the Rebellion itself. But as far as we know, we actually don't see him during the events of Star Wars Rogue One. So early RIP warning on his character, like he actually might wind up getting killed during the events of the series. 
The other interesting thing you'll notice is that it's the same actress who came back to play Mon Mothma. She's the same actress who played her when she was much younger during the events of the Star Wars prequel. We know from long-running Star Wars canon she was critical in the formation of the Rebellion as one of the more powerful figures along with Princess Leia. Like, Princess Leia was actually really critical in the formation of the Rebellion, too. So I'm wondering if we're going to see another younger version of her character who's just a little bit older than we saw her during the Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi series. That would be, like, one of the other big surprises of the series because we didn't really see her during the Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi trailers. They kind of kept that secret till the first couple of episodes dropped. Because she and Luke are twins, they're the same age. They were meant to be around the age of 18 during Star Wars A New Hope. I think this would make her about 13 years old during the events of the beginning of this series. But because the events of the series will take place over the course of five years, she might wind up showing up in the later episodes when she's just like a little bit older and she becomes an Imperial Senator. I think that happened when she was around 16 years old, so we'll see if she winds up popping up somewhere later in the series. Even though we didn't see him in this trailer, I believe that Bail Organa is also going to pop up during this series as well because he was also critical in the formation of the Rebellion as well. I think they were mostly using this trailer to just introduce you to a lot of the brand new characters along with a couple of the familiar characters. Like obviously Darth Vader, the Inquisitors were very active during this period, so we'll see what they're doing during this part of the timeline. All the Inquisitor characters that you saw during Obi-Wan Kenobi who were still alive at the end of that series, like the Grand Inquisitor, is still alive during this part of the timeline and still very active. They don't say exactly where this planet is when they pick up in the trailer. It might be Fest because I think we're meant to see a young version of Cassian Andor basically infiltrating the Empire on his own and trying to sabotage them from within before the actual formation of the Rebellion. Like he's kind of acting on his own, doing his own thing until Luthen's character comes to find him and recruit him for the actual Rebellion. They open by combining a couple familiar Star Wars tropes. So you open with like a Star Destroyer entering from above, just showing you how huge it is. But in the trailer, it's entering the atmosphere like you saw during Rogue One, like Star Destroyer inside a planet's atmosphere. It sounds like this Imperial Scrapyard planet is going to be a big part of the series. Like this is where the town is that we see later in the trailer. It also seems like it's where the facilities underground are, where they're building stuff using the scrap metal. I think the idea is they're just using it as a critical facility in their supply chain to build more weapons, just using scrap from other things that have been destroyed. It's not totally clear, but the way they're presenting this trailer footage, this is young Cassian Andor slowly infiltrating the Empire. And he's making this joke about how easy it is for you to just waltz into the Empire and become this saboteur. As you see this little kid, who might be Cassian Andor, just walking into this Imperial facility, this seems pretty critical. We get a shot of the Imperial Senate on Coruscant. Seems like a lot of the series is going to take place there. A lot of you will recognize Anton Lesser. He was Maester Kyburn on Game of Thrones. Now it seems like he's an Imperial Admiral residing over this group of admirals inside the Imperial Security Bureau. I think that's what the white uniforms are meant to denote because you see a couple white uniforms throughout the trailer. That's the same group the director Krennic's character was part of. He was in charge of building the Death Star. The Imperial Security Bureau is also the arm of the Empire that Moff Gideon on the Mandalorian rose up through. So that's obviously later in the timeline. He's become a Moff by that point. But at this point of the timeline, he's probably just like another officer inside the Imperial Security Bureau. I don't know if he's supposed to have any cameos during this. This woman in the white Imperial Security Bureau uniform is called D. Miro, and it seems like she's arresting Adriana Rojas' character here, who you recognize from a lot of other things. She seems like somebody who has a relationship with Cassian Andor's character early on, and they just try to interrogate her for more information on this quote-unquote resistance that's forming. Now, the big surprise here is that when you see the X-Wing, you also get reintroduced to Saw Guerrero's character. He comes back. Obviously, it's a younger version of the character than we saw during Rogue One. He doesn't have quite as many city miles on him like he isn't rasping through that breathing device. I believe they also brought a much younger version of the character back during the Bad Batch series, which takes place like right after the events of Revenge of the Sith. As a character, he's basically meant to represent the more militant arm of the Rebellion, like the one that's way more hardcore than most of the other Rebels. Like, he literally says the word war when he's talking to Luthen's character here. We see more of the Empire wearing their riot gear in this town on that same scrapyard planet. A lot of you asking if this character is meant to be Starkiller. If you look at the subtitles here, it says Sergeant Linus Mosk, so clearly not meant to be Starkiller. I think it's mostly just because he looks very similar to Sam Witwer, but it's not Sam Witwer. It's like a completely different actor. I think the idea with his character, because you see him a couple times in the other trailer too, is that he's meant to be someone in the Empire who has sort of second thoughts about what's going on and eventually might wind up being like a callous figure in Star Wars Rebels, who eventually you find out is helping the Rebellion. This is meant to be on Coruscant. I think this is also meant to be on Coruscant with the Imperial Shuttle. 
When you see the scene with Mon Mothma meeting with the other senators here at this party, this character actually seems kind of like Matt Ryan who played Constantine in the Arrowverse for many, many years. The character that Mon Mothma is talking to isn't meant to be Chancellor Valorum, but it does look similar to him. You see more of the Black Stormtroopers, those are the Death Troopers that we saw during Rogue One, those are flamethrowers that they're holding. Everyone will recognize Fiona Shaw from the Harry Potter films. It seems like in this series she's also playing an important character in the formation of the Rebellion on this scrapyard planet. Like she's one of the higher up figures inside the Rebellion. This red droid they were actually showing off at Comic Con, his name is B2 Emo. Just like with a lot of the other droids in Star Wars that they introduced like during the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, they'll probably be selling this as merch pretty soon if they aren't already. This is another new character called Clea. I don't know who this actress is. She seems kind of familiar, but she just seems like another character who's important within the Rebellion. Then you see a scene of Cassian Andor and the Rebels looking like they're trying to infiltrate an Imperial facility on this same scrapyard planet. All these scenes in the white area underground just seems like where they're actually processing a lot of this scrap metal into new weapons. Then they show you a montage of a bunch of different fight scenes with things just going crazier and crazier towards the end of the series. But like I said, the whole idea is that this is meant to be like a two season series of about 24 episodes total, I believe, and it's just meant to show you the formation of the actual rebellion. So like in the series finale at the end of season two next year, for example, it'll be like right at the beginning of Rogue One. If you spotted any big Easter eggs in the trailer that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments. There was another brand new She-Hulk trailer that just dropped this morning, so I'll try to do a video for that as fast as possible too. Make sure you enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. My She-Hulk episode videos will start in a couple weeks though. That'll be the first thing to drop. Everyone click here for my brand new Guardians of the Galaxy 3 trailer with a first look at Adam Warlock and a bunch of new footage. And click here for my brand new She-Hulk trailer and Ghost Rider Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.